Hello and welcome to Coffee with Carrie. Today is a more serious matter than a couple of my recent videos because I wanted to talk about dating scams. And they're out there and we have to be forewarned and forearmed and we've got to be ready and on the lookout. And I want to tell you the ways that I know to guard against being taken advantage of by a dating scam on the internet. So these are my seven tips. I hope that you'll stick around for all seven because not one is less important than the other. If you're new here, my name's Carrie, and this is a channel that I created for women in their 50s. We talk about things that are interesting to me like beauty, fashion, makeup, food, and because I'm a matchmaker and a dating coach here in Chicago, I often give advice, the same advice I give to my clients to you here who are out there dating in the craziness that is 2019. And it gets crazier all the time and people become more bold out there trying to take advantage of those of us who are just looking to make a connection with somebody that they're not finding in their own two block radius or in their own social circles. So I have a list here for you of seven tips to make sure that this doesn't happen to you. First, I should mention that it is people who are out there dating in their 50s like we are or above who are most often falling victim to these scams. And older women are the vast majority of people who are losing the most amount of money to scammers every year. In fact, in 2018, $143 million were lost to dating scammers. And as I said, the majority were older daters who were falling victim to this. So I do want to differentiate that catfishing is one thing. Scammers looking for money are different and sometimes they do meet. There are people who are just lonely and looking to talk with someone and cre create a profile and a persona, just basically looking for a pen pal with no plans of ever meeting someone in person. So that is one thing. These people aren't asking for money and they're a waste of time unless you're enjoying yourself, of course. And if you're looking for a real relationship, they're a big waste of time, but they're not quite as dangerous financially as the people who are looking to take advantage of your bank account. The amount of money lost to dating scammers is up 25% over the last couple years, this past year, so it's on the rise. And older people, the figures, let me look here. Brought my handy dandy cheaters. The average loss to a dating scammer is $2,600, but for somebody over 70, the average was $10,000 or more. So how this basically works is that these scammers will meet you on a dating app and try very hard to quickly establish a closeness and a trust so that they can then proceed to ask you for money. And the first thing, number one, that you need to be on the lookout for is somebody who is very, very free flowing with compliments. We all want to be told that our pictures are beautiful and we're the nicest person they've ever met on the internet and we're so open and finally they meet somebody who's normal. There are a million ways you could be complimented, but if it's not just, oh, I really liked your pictures, we should meet, you need to be on the lookout because excessive compliments are a way to pull people in and it creates a quick bond. So number one, be aware, excessive compliments it's probably not somebody you're going to end up dating. Number two is talking to somebody that is not in your immediate neighborhood. We have parameters we can set on all these dating apps so that we're talking to people within 15 miles or 25, 35, 50. If this person is matching with you but telling you that they're out of the country or out of your state, this is a telltale sign that they're not really who they say they are. This is a standard scammer move. So don't bother talking to, creating a relationship, or wasting your time on anybody who isn't living nearby you and talking about getting together really quickly. In fact, I tell my clients, you need to be getting on the phone, having a phone conversation or a FaceTime call 
within a day or two and you need to be out there on a date within a week. And if it's dragging on longer than that, this person isn't serious about meeting someone and having a relationship. And this would also apply to scammers. Number three is too much information, TMI. This person, there is something off because they are sharing too much too quickly and you know an awful lot about their private life and maybe their personal struggles that normally people don't share with someone that they just met on the internet. So if you're hearing about some financial woes or family issues, this is a clear sign that this person is not going to end up being your next romantic relationship. They're probably looking for something else and it's in your wallet. And if you should find yourself midway through some type of a growing connection with somebody and they ask you for private photos and you know what I'm talking about and you're feeling they've been so complimentary, they think I'm beautiful, they really do just want to see what I look like without part of my clothing on, I would advise you to not do that because one of the scams is that if they get photos of you that you would be embarrassed for everybody else to see, they would threaten you and that would be extortion. So that is another way that these scammers get money. They first acquire photos of you and then use those against you to extort money. No photos. Let them see you in person. Number five is that a lot of times these calls lead up to somebody having some type of a family emergency or they need money quick to get somewhere or to get somebody out of jail or to help a friend or to pay a medical bill. So somebody who's already telling you about family issues and problems is probably priming you and grooming you for what's to come and that's issues. We don't want to be starting relationships with people who aren't in a good place. We're working so hard to get ourselves in a place where we're going to be a great partner to somebody that we want somebody who's doing the same thing, right? Number six is that this person is very available at all times of the day. You're thinking to yourself, do you not have anything else going on in your life that you're able to text me or call me or want to talk to me this many times a day? And this per you are this person's job. They are wooing you to create a false relationship so that eventually they have your trust and they can take advantage of that trust. If somebody is available all the time and creating contact with you throughout the day, morning, noon, and night, be aware that this is not headed where you think it is. And number seven is their photos. And you can check somebody's photos. You can save their photo to your desktop and then drag it into a Google search and do an image search. And if it shows up elsewhere on other sites, very often it'll show up with other names. You will know that that is not a real picture. And speaking of pictures, if this person looks like a model, this person looks like all their photos are just them and their modeling type photos, professional pictures, and it seems too good to be true that this person so attractive is falling for you so quickly without knowing anything about you, we're dealing with a scammer. A lot of times these scammers will steal professional photos from somewhere else. They'll be somebody's modeling pictures and the person in the photos has no idea that their photos are being used. As your mother always told you, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. And speaking of these photos, very often they are medical photos because the very common things that these men will tell you that they do, the reason they're not in the country is that either they are A, in the military, I'm in the army on duty and that's why we can't meet, but I'm lonely and you seem wonderful, blah, blah and his pictures are very attractive uh, officer in the military and those people don't have time to be messaging women in the United States. That is a big red flag for scammers. Or they say they are doctors overseas in one of those Doctors Without Borders organizations where they're out of the country and helping others. So, so altruistic that of course you're going to think they're wonderful before they even say a word or start complimenting you or starting to have such strong feelings for you so quickly. And I think the um, oil rig, I had to sneak a peek. Oil, I haven't experienced this one personally, but 
the oil rig is the other one they're working hard and then there's something's gonna happen with their money they're getting so much money but they need you to front them some money before they get their money and they'll give you even more back part of another scam so try to avoid anybody as I said originally who's out of the country one of the telltale signs that this is starting off on the wrong foot is when you start messaging somebody and they are immediately trying to get you off the app that you met them on. So they're wanting you to go to a different site. They want you to go to WhatsApp or Kick or I don't, there have been a couple over the years. They're going to tell you, I'm canceling this account, but I'm so glad I met you in the nick of time. I can't talk here, so email me or meet me on this other messaging app, and they want to get you off on the dating app. So don't ever go to the second location. Isn't that the rule they tell us in person? Well, it's true online too. And I have a couple tips of things you can do that will help guard you against some of these people even reaching out to you in the first place. And one of them is came up this week with a client and she's a very successful woman in some type of a finance job and she had her specific profession listed on her dating app and I said nope you know that's just yelling I've got money <laughs> and when you're yelling that somebody's gonna say I want some so be careful what you present to people on your dating app as far as lavish vacations pictures of a beautiful car jewelry that you're wearing pictures of your home in the background also linking your other social media can be part of that because these people do research if you're meeting them on bumble they're also looking at your linked instagram and then with some information there they can find your facebook and they're gathering research so that they can come at you and pull at your heartstrings and eventually tell you about the family problems they're having and they're going to know you've got a big heart and you're a great person and you're going to want to help them with just a quick loan of two thousand dollars that they're going to pay you back with interest so don't link your other social media to your dating apps and have those all on private for your friends not for the general population also don't list your last name on any of those accounts if you can help it or list where you work because you're giving out TMI, too much information to people where if they're tech savvy, they can do a couple internet searches and piece it all together to know where you work and where you live. Be careful with all that information because not everybody's as wonderful as we are. And if you do ever find yourself in a relationship with somebody that doesn't seem to be available to meet you for weeks and months on end, be strong enough to end it. It's not a real person whose feelings you're going to hurt. And I know it can be embarrassing to admit that you've made this mistake, but thousands and thousands of women have. So embarrassment is not a reason to not go to the authorities and report people who do this. That's how we get these people to stop. And just because you've wired somebody money doesn't mean you need to sit there like a sitting duck waiting for them to do identity theft, right? So the quicker we find these people, the better. So don't let embarrassment ever stop you from coming forward to the authorities and letting people know that you've been taken advantage of. I hope you found some of these tips helpful and they will help guard against you wasting your time with somebody who isn't in the this dating game with the best intentions. There are a lot of really great people out there who are just looking to start over and find a partner to share their life with. Don't let some of these scammers waste your time so that you're not meeting the people who really would enjoy your company and getting to know you. And just as a reminder, my tip is you send a couple texts on the dating app, you get their phone number, you have a phone conversation. If you can talk them into doing a FaceTime chat or a video Skype or Zoom conversation so you can see their face and know that they are who they were in their pictures, that's great. If you get their phone number, put it in a Google search, search it on Facebook, do your due diligence to make sure you're talking to who you think you are. And if this person is really nice on the phone and you've had some nice conversations over the last two days make plans to get out there for a cup of coffee it shouldn't be that difficult to align two people's schedules I'm aligning 30 people's schedules every month so and that's 60 people so if you can't get one person to meet you for a glass of wine or a cup of coffee 
that's kind of alarming. Just protect yourself, be smart, and happy dating. <laughs> I don't know, I just wanted to say that. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And we don't always talk about dating, but I always hope that you can find something useful from me sharing the information I give to my clients. If you do, hit that subscribe button and the ring bell so you're notified when I upload new videos. I truly appreciate you stopping by to see what I wanted to talk about today. And until the next time, thank you and have a good one. I truly appreciate, I truly, I truly.